Welcome to the Tachles Show with Kira Chernikovsky. Tachles is a Hebrew word that means essence, purpose, to the point. Only necessary information. One to five actionable takeaways from every episode. Tune in to marketing, sales, and leadership conversations with people who succeed by doing things differently. Join every week for your dose of inspiration and action. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my show. Today, we're talking about product marketing and analyst relations. And today, I'm hosting Jana Persky, my friend and former colleague. Hi, Jana. Thanks for hosting me. Well, I invited Jana because when I didn't have a clue on what product marketing is, she was already doing that for quite a while. And today, I've asked Jana to share some wisdom. Well, let's dive into the first question. Jana, please explain in your terms what product marketing really is. Okay, so product marketing, I would put it this way, it's a special breed and it's a very challenging position that sits basically at intersection of uh, product management, sales and customer success. And if you look at different companies, PM product marketing role, it uh, varies significantly from company to company and not just from company to company, the job definition and the uh, responsibilities of product marketing also varies differently like from for a product marketing working for a hardware company and the product marketing working in a software business it's also very 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 different also what is also very important is at what stage your company basically is if mm -hmm. it's pre-launch or is it after launch because if it's pre-launch phase like a startup company that's just a newly founded startup company so usually it's uh, in terms of product marketing, it would be the most, it would be the busiest and product oriented one uh, product marketing role because the amount of collateral, the amount of uh, uh, documentation and presentations and website and launches and messaging and positioning, everything is new, is really enormous. So uh, on the flip side, you get to know the product quite well and you become an expert in the product because you start from scratch. And uh, as for me, I never had uh, a chance to work uh, for a company at this early stage. I always joined the company when the product was already launched and the company had, uh, let's say, um, already uh, several paying clients, several paying customers. If we look at product marketing, there were, I would, I would put it this way. There were three main pillars of product marketing. The first one is um, uh, the research. Uh, so industry research, customer research, market trends, competitive landscape, everything helps you understand the market you operate in. The second pillar is about messaging and positioning. So it's mostly relevant for the pre-launch phase, but you do revisit your messaging and positioning as market evolves and product becomes more mature. You would need to do some fine tuning to fine tune your messaging, to fine tune the positioning. And the third pillar, in my opinion, is product launches and go to market, go to market mm -hmm. strategy. So product launch, it basically with product launch, you brings the product to the market, uh, go to market strategy drives the um, the product growth by communicating the value to the market, of the product to the market. If you look at this way, uh, product marketing, it's not linear, it's, uh, it's a loop. It's a loop that you basically, you repeat the same steps over and over again, okay? And it's, it's very different. It can vary from quarter to quarter. For example, this mm -hmm. quarter you're working on a pre-launch, the next quarter, you are working on the go-to-market strategy, on the tactics, basically. So it's it's very, very different. Uh, in terms of go-to-market strategy, something that drives your growth, yes, once you launched your product. As for my company, where I work, we decided that we, uh, you can do, basically, you can, of course, you can do many, many, many things, okay? But you, you can't do that. You don't have resources, so you have mm -hmm. to choose 
the most important go-to-market uh, strategy that would work for your company. How do you know if it works? You have to measure. You have to measure it every time you do something, okay? You try and you measure, okay? You can modify, but you have to measure. So in terms of our company, what we decided to do is uh, something also the conservative product marketing and also something innovative. What I mean by innovative, that we decided uh, to start podcasts. It's not something that you do, okay, that you invite guests. We basically book, uh, I, I try to book our SEO as a guest on other podcasts. It takes us exactly 30 minutes. Of course, it takes time to pitch because pitching is, uh, um, is very time consuming. You have to find the right podcasts. You have to write, you have to find the right hosts. Uh, the relevant topics, uh, you have to understand what the target audience is. But once you find that and you basically are uh, invited as a guest, it takes for that person that is interviewed only 30 minutes. If it's a 30 minute, if it's mm -hmm. a 30 minutes podcast, it takes you exactly 30 minutes. Okay. And you don't have to deal with video and you don't have to deal with audio. You don't have to deal with, uh, with, with the clips, with the promotion, because everything they do everything it's i mean they do it for you okay you just interviewed and once the clip is ready once the podcast is ready they just notify you that the podcast is out here is the embedded code uh here is the link and you just go ahead so this is something that helps us to uh increase our brand awareness as a go-to-market strategy podcast so the other the other important or um I would say um, lead generation tool for us. Since we focus on lead generation, we, we, we try to bring as many leads as possible to our website to increase our traffic. So we do write weekly blog posts. And it's very, what, what is important about all these tactics that you have to be very consistent. If you decided that you do podcast, you have to be very consistent. And you, <laughs> and at least we have at least uh, we have one or or two podcasts per week. In terms of blog wow. post, yes. In terms of blog post, we uh, release a new blog post every week. So I try to be very very consistent. It's very very important. This is something that your customers, your prospect, this is something that they expect from you, that you are consistent. We also run our quarterly webinars again, and everything. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about, weekly blog post. Podcast, okay, podcast may be less, okay, but weekly blog post, case studies and testimonials, all these are very, very powerful lead generation tools. You need, basically, you, you need to do research. In order to write uh, an insightful and valuable blog post, you need to do a lot of research. You have to understand what is in there for them, for, for my potential customers. Why would they want to buy this product? It's not going to be like just a product overview. It should be something that I'm talking about the challenges, how we tackle their challenges, something that would resonate to them. So this type of blog post, they, they are time consuming because you have to research. You have to do your research and to understand, to find, you know, like a very uh, nice angle that you can connect to something that would really resonate to your potential customer. Yeah. And when they read that, they will, oh, this is exactly my problem. This is exactly what I'm looking for right on the spot. Yeah, looks like the product marketing is touching every part of the organization. And if you are not prepared, then it doesn't matter what the deliverable is, the blog post or the article or even the podcast then no one reads those if they are not prepared and they go really high level. Th that's brilliant. But uh, can you tell me how does your organization distribute, promote the content that you create? Because it might be wonderful, but if no one sees that, what's the point? We do have a digital marketing uh, manager, okay, marketing manager that is responsible for promoting uh, the content I basically, uh, I create, I'm responsible for creating, uh, an original content and he is responsible to promote this content. So we, of course, we do use social media. We do have, uh, we send our blog posts to our 
customer base, customer data database every week. We do paid social, we do Google ads, we do PPC, uh, SEO, of course. So tons of different things, okay? But I, I'm less uh, proficient in this. Uh, I mean, this is like the basic, what I know what he does. I, I guess everybody does this. I mean, we are not different from other companies. But what I wanted to say that once you create your content, try not to copy your uh, competition, your competitors. Try to do new things. Try to innovate because this is very important. You have to be very creative in, and innovative. Don't copy them, okay? It's not, usually it's not what they do. This is like the right things to do. You can try your own things and you can measure whether it works or not. So just keep it in mind that it's better to be creative and innovative and not to copy your competitors. And um, the other thing, which is uh, very important, what we do, we uh, man maintain analyst relations. Yeah, tell me about that, because to me, analysts are big people. And when you're a huge known organization, then you go to those foresters and gardeners of the world. But what you are saying is like, hey, that's not right. Everybody can do it. So can you explain what you do for the organization you work for, please? Okay, so, uh, yeah, so in terms of industry analysts, you know, there is uh, some, there is a misconception, and I've been asked many, many times, uh, do we have to establish uh, an uh, analyst relations uh, program? Do you think it's uh, justified? There are questions like, it will cost us a fortune, uh, and they promise basically nothing. Do you know what's their mistake? Because they don't see the value. They don't see the value. What What is it in there for them? How can they basically, how can I benefit? How can I benefit from uh, launching a program with analyst relations, okay? When you implement a solution, you can see some tangible results in the short term, okay? When you buy a dress, you like it, yes? You can mm -hmm. wear your dress, okay? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you start your relationship with analyst, you don't see immediate results. No. This is investment in the long term. And this is something, because if you look, for example, at leading industry analyst companies, okay, they promise nothing, really. If you look at their value well, proposition, if you look at their value proposition, they promise nothing except for the fact that they show you the future. It's like they are your eyes and ears, okay? And um, they can help you somehow grow your business, but you don't know how. You don't have anything to measure. It's not an immediate uh, result. So that's why it's very, very difficult uh, to, to justify this investment. But the good news, and also, I mean, uh, as a vendor, as a potential, as a startup company or as a vendor, okay, what is my goal when I approach this industry analyst? My goal at the end of the day, I want to be covered by <laughs> this industry analyst. I want them to write about me. I want them to include me in Gartner, Magic Quadrant, in Forrester Wave, in Hype Cycles, Cool Vendors, whatever you call it, okay? Yeah. This is my goal at the end of the day. This is what I want to, this is where I want to be. Okay, and uh, the good news, the good news is that you have to rethink about industry. You have to rethink how, how basically about the value, okay, uh, you get from the analyst. Analyst, industry analysts, they are trust advisors. They're not paid to play, okay? They tend to be very objective. They track vendors and they check them against many, many, many parameters. So their product reviews and company reviews, they are very, very deep reviews, okay? They are based on various, various parameters. So reports are usually purchased by uh, IT buyers, uh, investors, and uh, vendor competitors, and vendors, and, and vendor, and, uh, vendor com competitors, yes. So analyst relations, I would say, industry analysts, they are like social media influencers, okay? Mm -hmm. We got social media influencers. They are market influencers, okay? And they influence purchase decisions. So many IT buyers, they basically send inquiries or they have briefings with industry analysts about this or that specific company. 
if it's worth investing in that software, if it's worth investing in that specific hardware. So did you uh, have um, consulting with them, with this industry analysts? So the good news is you don't have to invest too much money uh, to establish our uh, industry, to, to, to establish analyst relations because uh, so it's actually it's, it's very, very basic. First, what you have to do is to find uh, the right key firms, the right companies, the due analyst uh, uh, relationships, the due industry analysis. Uh, there are areas of uh, coverage and the most relevant analysts that cover your market. Then you, what you have to do, you, you just schedule a vendor briefing. You don't have to be a paying client. You can do it for free. No. no. Oh, wow. You don't have to be, no, you don't have to be a paying client. You can do it for free. It works both with uh, many uh, industry analyst firms like Gartner and Forrester. Yes. As, oh, a, wow. as, a potential, as a potential client, you can do that for free. Schedule a vendor briefing. Okay, but here... You have to understand that that it's 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 very time sensitive. Usually, it's like half an hour. Vendor briefing is half an hour, including that you have some technical issues. Okay, so it's never thirty minutes. In the best case scenario, you have like 25, 26 minutes that you have like to brief the analyst that is relevant to your area of expertise. So the tips are that tell your story. You have to tell your story. You have only 25 minutes to tell your story. You have to prepare six to seven slides and have probably a great case study. You have to impress. You have only 20, 25 minutes to impress the analyst. If it went well, they might schedule a demo call with you. If you are very innovative and if your solution is really cool and they do believe it's like, it's a true market leader, or it could be a potential market leader. They will cover you. But if it doesn't work, okay, you really, you have to be very, very innovative, okay, to be invited, uh, to be covered in Forest Away, or to be covered, for example, in Magic, uh, in Gardner Magic Warren. But if it doesn't work, there are other ways, okay? You don't have to invest so much money and to be their client. You can do some consulting engagements with them. You can do like sponsored webinars. It will cost you much, much less. But this way you can establish a relationship with, with the analyst, okay? And in the long run, it will pay off. You have to be friends with that potential, with that specific industry analyst. You have to, to be friends. It's like you have to establish a good friendship, a good relationship with him, okay? But it's not only for new customers, okay? If you're using already, if you're already a paying client, okay, you have to be very proactive, okay, because many, they are not proactive. They are just sitting and waiting for a magic to happen, okay, that they will be somehow covered in Forest Away for Gardner Magic Warren without doing anything, okay? It's not going to happen. Nothing happens like that, okay? You have to be very proactive. You have to send them millions of inquiries. You have to suggest them different ideas and topics, okay? Because at the end of the day, they do write stories. They do write mm -hmm. research notes at the end of the day. And they, like us, they are looking for new ideas, for new angles. And this is something that can come from you, from a company, from a vendor. Suggest some ideas, okay? Suggest some angles to look at this a little bit differently. So talk to them, bombard them with inquiries, okay? If you're already paying clients, so use that. You have unlimited inquiries to send this analyst. So they do love, analysts, they do love proactive, proactive uh, people, yes. Listen, that's amazing insight. I think that so many companies and startup founders are just missing out on this analyst opportunity. And I hope after today's conversation, there will be less of those people and more of those who do utilize that, that opportunity. It's great. Thank you for sharing your insights and years of knowledge. And now at the very end, please introduce yourself and tell us where people can find you. I'm Jana Persky. I'm head of product marketing at Peppery. Peppery is a B2B sales platform for brands and manufacturers 
and we uh, serve more than 1,000 companies worldwide in more than 70 countries. And it's very simple. It's like Pepper, double P, and I in the end, peppery.com. Awesome. And where can people find you? LinkedIn, email, or just on the website somewhere? I do write blog posts, yeah, so uh, they can find me there on our website. If you go to blogs and also on LinkedIn, yes, Jana Persky, yes. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. I was so happy to have you here. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye.